and welcome to Just One More Seiko. Hang on a minute, didn't I sit here not two months ago and say, no more Seiko? Yes, I did, but I wasn't stupid enough not to give myself a get out clause when I said, I am still gonna continue to review their more budget focused models though. I still think there's value to be had from Seiko as a brand, but not over a thousand dollars. I've been stung now a couple of times spending big bucks on Seiko and being disappointed with what I received, both in terms of the overall product and in terms of the quality control at the price. Their strength is still and always has been at 500 US dollars or less, and that is where I shall be focusing on them from this point on, starting today with the watch on my wrist, the SRPG13, AKA, well, AKA in Australia, the Taurus, AKA in Scotland, the Tortoise. Now my passport may have a kangaroo on the front, but I still pronounce things in Scottish, so it's a tortoise to me. Big shout out to subscriber and friend of the channel, Mr. P, he of 400 plus watches. This is one of his, I think he's probably up to 450 now. He kindly loaned me this one in for review. Interesting new model, the name suggests that it's a land version of the Turtle. I don't think it's quite that simple. It reminds me more of the 6306 and 6309 than the 6110. I'll talk a bit more about some Seiko references over the course of the vid, but definitely one of their most interesting new models of 2021. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. So a Tortoise, not a Turtle then. I guess one way of differentiating between their models is the boxes. This is from their Fieldmaster range, so it's still a Prospects model, but it's clearly not a diver. Kind of looks like a diver, but it's not. It's not a diver. From memory, when I reviewed the Alpinist a while ago, it came in one of these big oblong boxes as opposed to the small square boxes that all their dive models come in. And there it is. Now, this is the 13. They do a 15 in blue and a 17 and a 19. I'll kind of talk about them a bit later on. But first, let's talk about my favorite subject. Let's talk price. These ones, the K model 13s, are available on eBay all day long for less than 400 US dollars. 379 is the lowest price I could find. 399 on Amazon. I'll obviously leave links to both of those in the description of the video. Mr. P didn't actually buy one of these K models. He got it his from Nomon Watches out of Singapore for 479. It's the JDM version though. That one, the derivation is the SBDY099. I've always thought that the kind of K to J is a bit of a moot point, but hey, if you're into the watch and you've got the extra cash and you want to buy the J model, then I'm not going to stop you. So what are the dimensions and specifications on this one then? Well, it's a really neat set of dimensions. 42.1 mil in diameter. I measure it at 11.9 mil thick, so under 12 mil thick. And this has got a Seiko 4 r movement in it. There aren't too many watches with 200 meters of water resistance and a 4 r slash NH35 that scrape in underneath the 12 mil. Likewise, lug tip to lug tip today, 44.7. So really, really compact. It wears very, very nicely, or at least it would do if the supplied canvas and leather strap wasn't as stiff as a bloody board. I'm going to take it off that towards the end of the video and show you on a couple of alternatives. 20 millimeter lug width and on the supplied stiff as a board canvas leather back strap, it weighs in at 85 grams. Case finish is standard Seiko. So we have a circular brush finish on the upper surface and we have their lovely traditional super smooth high polish on the under surfaces. Very, very comfortable on wrist, like I said, and drilled lug, so at least you can get it off this stiff as strap if you so choose. Unsigned crown, that is also typical Seiko down there at the four o'clock. Not typical though is flat sapphire crystal. So you pay a little bit more for this one. You're pushing towards 400, but you do get sapphire as part of the deal. You also get a coin edge bezel. It is a compass bezel though, being bi-directional rather than unidirectional, and there is an anodized bicolor aluminium bezel insert in there. I will talk a bit more about that later on. 
So the strap then, look, I can't fault it for quality. I think tonally it is spot on. This watch tonally is just perfect. They've got everything so nicely matched. Stitching's great. It's got that leather reinforced section. Nothing worse than a decent canvas and leather strap, canvas and cast strap, and you get those perforations when the canvas section frays. So that's gonna stop that doing it. It's padded at the top. It's got that cross stitching to hold it all together, double retainers, and nice Seiko stamped hardware brush to match that upper surface, but it's just so stiff. It's kind of like rawhide. You wanna sit there and chew it for a couple of hours a day until it eventually softens up. I don't know how many people are gonna be bothered with this one though. I think it's a long-term project to get it to soften up. Much like Gary's Grand Seiko that I reviewed a couple of months ago, he ditched it for a similarly toned strap. I don't quite know what they're doing making them so stiff. Long-term, great. Short-term, medium-term, not so great. The 17 and 19 models models though are available on leather and there are no shortage of options for you. I'm going to put it on a leather and a marine national to show you in a bit. So 200 meters of water resistance and a nicely grippy big screw down crown but no dive time bezel today. We have a bi-directional compass bezel instead. Look you can still use this one for timing eggs or parking meters or whatever it is you time but you're gonna to have to get used to looking at the bezel in three and three quarter and seven and a half minute chunks rather than five minute and minute chunks. It's not quite as easy, but it's certainly doable. What you can do with this though, is get a direction if you're out and you're lost in the wilderness based on the bezel and the direction of the sun. In brief, if you are lost in the wilderness and you need to use this compass bezel to find north to help you get to civilization, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and the time is set accurately on your watch and it's not set to some daylight saving time, you point the hour hand at the sun and then you find the difference between the hour hand and the 12 o'clock marker and that is south, roughly, therefore you know where north is. If you're in the southern hemisphere though, it is slightly different. You point the 12 o'clock index to the sun, you then find the difference between the hour marker, the hour hand rather, and the 12 o'clock marker, and that is north, and you therefore find south appropriately. How many people are gonna get lost in the wilderness with this one? I'm not sure. Lost in your local suburb, perhaps that is more likely. They have added some emergency markers on the back here, kind of ground to air emergency signal code. If you wanna assemble some twigs or something and <laughs> alert the local helicopter to help you, yeah, that's all a bit complicated in my eyes. Just write help in giant letters on the ground. That would probably do the trick just as well. All right, let's take it outside and have a look at the dial and hands. And like I said, I think tonally the colors on this 13 model just work perfectly. Green strap matches with the green top half of the compass bezel. The black bottom half of the compass bezel matches in nicely with the Reho, the chapter ring. Now the dial and hands, I wouldn't call them kind of green. It's almost like a pale green beige. Yeah, it just works for me overall very, very nicely, I think. The blue one, similarly, nicely color matched, but obviously in blue rather than in green. So these indexes, I think, are applied. They're not embossed. I'll show you some super close up in a minute or two, but I think they look applied. You've got that double split truncated triangle up there at 12 larger batons at the three, the six and nine pointing into the center. And there's the little compass marks pointing into the pinion there as well. Applied rectangular indices at the other hour markers. Usual printed markers on that reho with larger ones at the fives. The Seiko logo is applied today. The Prospects X printed beneath the pinion, automatic and 20 bar and made in Japan because this is the JDM SBDY 099 as discussed. Now, date window. This one has the crown at four or more specifically at about 10 past four and they've put the date in there at the 4.30. I know why they've done it. They've done it to maintain the integrity of those indices, but it will be in the moans and niggles section later on. Now zoomed in even closer to have a look at the dial and hands today. You can see what I mean. Yeah, I think those indices are applied as opposed to pushed through from the back. And I like the handset a lot. Large arrowhead hour hand, slightly flared minute hand, both of which have slight syringe tips to them. 
super thin needle second hand with a lollipop counterbalance and they're in gunmetal silver. Again, I think that suits the overall tones of this one perfectly. Nice to see Seiko applying the logo on a watch for under 400 bucks as well. And on wrist, I think it looks great. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference and this 42 mil size fits me perfectly. Super compact, sub 45 lug to lug. This is gonna fit pretty much anybody, I think. 20 mil lug width help with that as well. But the strap, I've been trying my best for Mr. P. I've been flexing this one back and forth, trying to get it to fit a little bit better. But yeah, it's stiff. It's going to be a long term project. If you do want to live with one of these straps, you're going to have to put the time in, put the hours in, wrap it around a beer bottle when it's not on your wrist and try and get it to force a little bit of flex in there. Overhead shot legibility isn't bad considering those hands are kind of silver gunmetal, as mentioned, and they're not all that different from the color of the dial itself. Maybe some of the other colorways would be more legible, but as it is, it's still fine. And when you get this one outside, Sapphire, a welcome addition from Seiko at this price. Not sure how much anti-reflective undercoating is on it, to be honest, though, as you can see, definitely a bit of bounce back when I move the watch around. Still looks pretty good, though. And that's it on wrist. Yeah, stiff strap aside, it wears very, very nicely. I think it wears like a small Willard, perhaps even a slim mini Turtle. Those are the two most comparable models, and it wears somewhere in between those two, I think. So then, good value for a Seiko, nicely finished, very wearable and good looking as well. But what am I going to complain about? Well, the strap, I have complained about it at length already. You don't have to go for one on canvas though. This is the full range of four. And like I said, there are two other models, not quite as outdoor oriented, the 17 and the 19. I believe the 17 is the black and gilt on the left and the 19 is the PVD gold. They both come with leather straps. So you can avoid the problem of canvas from the beginning by opting for one of those, or you can sidestep the problem of canvas by swapping it out for something else. I must admit that is a bit of a relief getting it off that canvas strap and onto, well, pretty much anything. I think this one is going to go very well with leather, kind of brown leather or these kind of earthy outdoor tones. Obviously NATO straps as well, less than 12 mil thick. You'll have no problem even putting a double pass NATO underneath that, I think. Or a Marine National is going to work well with this one, I think, stylistically tonally and in terms of out of the box comfort. It's a shame that Seiko provides a great strap, but you're gonna have to put some work in if you wanna use it. And then there's the loom. Seiko provide their own loom. They make their own loom. They call it Lumi Bright. I haven't seen blue Lumi Bright before. I've only ever seen green Lumi Bright. Yeah, initially it looks a lot like BGW9, that kind of pale, icy white blue glow. And it looks good initially anyway. No loom pip on this one, as discussed. It's not ISO certified, it's not a dive watch. It looks nice and bright. But if I crank the speed up and we really go rapidly to the end of the 20 minute test period, which I always think is about four to five hours equivalent of human eye, it doesn't look so great. I mentioned earlier on that they've dyed the hands and the indexes. It's not quite Fotina, but it's not far off. And there's always a price to pay when you dye the loom. I think the price paid here is it doesn't last as well as it might. And then there is that date complication down there at the 4.30. I understand why they did it to keep that loom shot looking as good as it did, initially at least, but it's always a little bit awkward. I much prefer either three or six, and to be honest, I would probably have done with either of those and losing one of those big four batons, but hey, not my decision to make, it was Seiko's. It's not a deal breaker, but it's just not as neat as it could have been. But overall, I like it. I think it's well made, well spent, well priced, and a welcome addition to the Seiko lineup for under 400 USD, assuming you're okay with going for the K model. There's an argument that the compass bezel is no more useless or useful than a dive time bezel for most people who don't take their watches diving. And the size is great as well. There's an argument also that this one is a half price Willard. If you're all right with the fact that it's got a 4R rather than a 6R, 
and you were looking at one of the Willards on the rubber strap anyway, why not pick up one of these instead, save yourself a ton of cash and just buy a rubber strap from Strapcode or Uncle Seiko or something. Yeah, you'd be getting a lot of watch for your money if you did that, whereas I don't think you get an awful lot of watch for your money with the Willard and I know I bought one and sold it pretty swiftly. And the size is also great. The Mini Turtle is still my pick for people with small wrists, but this one certainly another Seiko to choose from. So there you have it, well done for making it all the way to this point in the video. If you're a fan of Seiko, why not check out my review of their King Turtle. I reckon this one ticks a lot of boxes at under 500, or the Mini Turtle, undoubtedly the best Seiko you can buy if you have small wrists. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.